everyone. Welcome to Mindy's Craft Shack. I'm Melinda and I'll be doing a how to polish up your tumblers to give them to either for yourself to give them away as gifts or if you're selling them. I remember the first time that I started making my tumblers. I was real careful. I never got any epoxy inside. And of course, the more orders or the more you do, the less likely you are to be able to do that because you're kind of rushing, making not really rushing, but doing it at a much faster pace. So you do tend to get that epoxy inside. I remember the first time I did, I was freaked out. I was like, oh my God, now it's ruined and I can't give this away or I can't sell this to anybody because there's epoxy inside the cup. Just through trial and error, I was like, how can I get this out? I spent hours just playing with stuff and I figured it out. What I've done is I've got some cups here that I've kind of done throughout the week and I've purposely put epoxy inside on the rims of things so I can show you how to get it off the rim with a hot knife, how I pick it out of the cup with just a standard weeding tool. I want to show you if you have to, if your cup is so bad because either you messed up on the outside or it just became a disaster that you cannot fix because I've had those and I have them quite often. I'm going to show you a sure way to be able to save that cup for later use after you've stripped it. So I'm going to show you the stripping process. Now I do have a video on how to strip a cup on my YouTube. But I know not all of you are YouTube users, so that's why I'm, I kind of added this on to our live today. Something that you need with fixing your cups is a hot knife. And this is just a pyro, uh, pyrography pen that I got, and it's got a hot knife with it. And you get a lot of attachments to it. So that's one major thing you need to polish up your cup. That is the thing I'll be giving away today. Sorry, my mind's just all over the place. Is a pyrography pen. It won't be the same type as mine, but it'll be a good pyrography pen. So towards at the end of this live, I'll be uh, doing a uh, pick the number for that a pyrography pen. A couple other things I want to show you about getting ready to polish up your uh, tumblers and stuff is I have kind of marked where because it's kind of hard to see the epoxy in the cups so I've kind of marked inside just with alcohol ink so where you see that black towards the top that's where the epoxy is. So I'm just going to bring you on down and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully you can all see. I've got uh, this cup. You can see inside it's got the spray paint in it and some glitter chunks in there. And I'm going to show you how I clean that up. Now, this cup used my glitter on it. It is the Chunky Mix Dark Siren. And you can actually find that on my Etsy page at MCS Glitter Company on Etsy. And you get two ounces of it. And I wanted to especially show it off on what it looks like on a cup. So this would be perfect to do as a peekaboo mermaid tumbler. I think those colors would be just beautiful. And that is Dark Siren at MCS Glitter Company. And then I've got 40 ouncer that I did for a friend of mine and I got some epoxy up on this rim that kind of goes over that lip and that's where we'll be using the hot knife on how to evenly get it off, even up those rough edges there. And then I've also got another cup I'm working on. It's my Witch's Brew cup. But I'm gonna take the hot knife and go around the edge here to make sure it's nice and even. 
so that lid fits on there nice and tight. So I think that's it for the cups that we'll be working on today. And then this cup, it's the one we actually did last week. Um, I'm gonna just strip it and so I can reuse it. So, um, to get started, the first thing you'll need is acetone. So, um, I got this acetone just at Walmart. It's just nail polish removal, remover acetone. And um, you can get a big bottle of it for like just a couple dollars. And then I've just got these uh, makeup pads that I get at the dollar store. Um, they're kind of cottony. And I only use these on the inside of the cups. Um, if I'm cleaning up a cup on the outside, I use paper towel. So those fibers don't get on that outside of the cup because they will show up under epoxy. I'm just taking my makeup pad here and I'm taking it, I filled it with acetone and I'm just going around on the inside of the cup and you can see how well that comes off. It takes the glitter off and everything and you can see how well there is no sign of any paint in that cup. Okay, and you can kind of see um, where some of the chunky and uh, glitter got on the rim here, so we can just use the hot knife for that too. Want to make sure you see this, and I just take my hot knife and I put it against the rim there. And I don't know if you can see it smoking, but it will smoke. You want to um, kind of tilt it inside so that you're not, because uh, you don't want it on the outside because you just saw me slip. So kind of tilt it on the inside. And it does not burn the cup at all. It just takes care of that glitter on the outside or epoxy. And there you go. All those glitter chunks are off that rim. Uh, Tabitha would like to know where do you get the hot knife? And Jeanette would like to know are you pressing down hard? And Shauna would also like to know where do you get the hot knife? So I got the hot knife off of Amazon. Uh, the set that I got was about $40. You get all kinds of attachments to it, the hot knife, um, some stencils and stuff like that. So if you do other projects, it's a great uh, tool to have. Another uh, thing here, we have this cup. And again, it's just pretty much the same. Where you're going to take that acetone. And I do use acetone inside the cups. Remember, don't get it on the outside because it will start to eat your epoxy away. So you want to make sure that um, it's just on the inside. Also, if you are using acetone and uh, cleaning up your cups, the best time to do this is, for me, I have found, is your time between your second coat and your last coat. You want to make sure, that way, if you have to go around the rim, you know, it's going to touch that epoxy. So then you can just, uh, you know, after it dries, you can just go and uh, epoxy over that. Amber would like to know, uh, the hot knife, is that the same as a wood burner? Yes, yes. And Ashley would like to know, after washing the cup with hot soapy water, will the acetone leave a taste inside the cup? No, no. Um, you won't be able to uh, taste any acetone or anything like that. Um, I 
do it with my own cups, and I've never uh, tasted any kind of chemical or anything like that. So, if I had, I would find something different to uh, do it with. Again, just taking that nice, and I'm not pressing very hard at all. Uh, Terry would like to know, how many totes do you usually do of epoxy? Uh, Terry, that depends on the cup you're doing. Um, like, this one here, I just did a, uh, oh, whatchamacallit, a water slide. And so, um... With these cups, you have to make sure they are totally smooth before you put the water slide on, first of all. And so I did two coats of epoxy, put the water slide on, and then just one more coat of uh, epoxy. So this one did three. Chunky glitters, you're probably looking at three to four. Um, hydro dips. Again, three. So the normal is probably about three coats. Chloe would like to know, how did you make the 3D bubbles? The 3D bubbles, um, that is made with uh, pearl halves. So these right here. Let me get them out of the box here. And so you can see. Oh. There we go. And I got this bucket at Hobby Lobby, but you can also go on to Amazon. They have uh, like, I don't know, 3,500 of them for like 10 bucks or something like that. And they're all different sizes, all the way down to your tiny, tiny ones. So. Trinica would like to know, where did you find the liquid container that pumps? So, um, I was told to go to the dollar store. They have these bottles at the dollar store. And uh, they come with some acetone already in them. So, or was it, it was either acetone or just nail polish remover. So, I, the acetone that was in them anyways wasn't very good. So, I just emptied it out and put my own acetone in them. So, yeah, dollar store. And Terry, who asked about how many coats do you usually do of epoxy, uh -huh. uh, would like to know, do you do it after your glitter and decal? So, uh, when you're doing it, um, you're going to put your glitter on. You're going to do a coat of epoxy. Um, make sure, now this is what's called a flood coat, because you want to make sure that glitter is nice and covered. Um, if you're doing water slide, you're going to sand it after that first coat of epoxy has set and uh, dried, and then you're going to do another coat of epoxy. Make it real smooth, and then you're not going to sand at all. And then you're going to add on the water slide, and then boom. Uh, one more coat of epoxy. Now I did do a water slide uh, video and it is on my YouTube at Mindy's Craft Shack on YouTube. So now I will let you know the audio sucks on it. It didn't come out very good with the audio. But you can watch the video and you can hear me, but you can, in the background, the washer's going, the dryer's going, and for some reason, my uh, microphone wasn't working very well. But if you watch it on your phone, you can turn it way up and hear it. Um, so that video on water slide is on YouTube. And please, please go and subscribe and like on my YouTube, Mini Scrap Shack. Ashley would like to know, when you're using water slide paper on the cups after the first layer of resin, how do you make it so the paper doesn't bubble up? She says, I've noticed that when using clear sticker paper, the resin goes underneath the paper, and while on the spinner, it's hard to even it out. Okay, so... 
when using a water slide, um, the real reason why you want it really smooth is because you don't want those bumps under there. And that's what happens with like sticker paper or uh, I use printable vinyl. You can get those bumps under there. I was trying to see on here um, or if I had a cup and I don't have a cup with printable vinyl on. But you have to really sand that top layer of glitter or top layer of epoxy. You got to make sure that cup is really smooth to get out those bubbles. If you still have bubbles, like when you lay your uh, vinyl or uh, your printable vinyl, um, you can take a pen and I've got like a, a weeding pen. Let me get it for you real quick. It's just a pen and it's actually a weeding tool. I don't know if you can see it. That little like needle at the end, it's perfect for weeding. But it also, if you, uh, on your vinyl, if you poke the bubble um, and you can get that air pocket out of that vinyl. And I did it on here. And this is just vinyl, but it had some bubbles in it, and you're going to get that. So you just poke it and uh, smooth it out, and that air comes out of there. Jeanette says, have you ever gone too far with the knife? I find when I use an X-Acto knife, it could go down too far or pull, or does it pull away? Sometimes if I hit the epoxy wrong, it pulls away from the cup. So, yeah, that's why... I use a hot knife because that's what I found too is that when I used an X-Acto knife or even if I've used this, um, you know, and gone around the rim, it does, it can pull that epoxy and then you have to, uh, put on another coat of epoxy. So that's why I really recommend a hot knife to go around that edge and um, if it's like over and down in you just want to skim that edge around there and I'll show you right now with this cup it has a big piece of epoxy right here and it is like over that rim there so I'm just gonna take my hot knife and go away from yourself and I hope you can see that smoke in. But it's yeah. just going around. And with this, you want to go as slow as you can. Don't be in a hurry. A lot of times, that's what I think happens is that, you know, we just get in hurries. And, um,. We get to go in too fast, and that's where our problems come. Okay, here's that piece. And you can see I'm just going around that rim, and it's not breaking the seal because it's pretty much melting that area where the epoxy's overlapping. And so you're not going to break that rim. And you're going to feel some resistance there. And I'm just concentrating on what I'm doing so I don't slip. And now, um, just finishing up here. Okay. 
Now I've gone all the way around the cup and you see it's just uh, peeled off that epoxy. Now I'm going to go back with my pick and just pick it off. And see, it's not, it's not connected to that, under that rim anymore. So, it comes off very nicely and even. And you can see I don't have any uh, pulling where it counts. Uh, Felicity writes, I'm doing my first epoxy wine cup. Fun. I'm stuck on how many coats to use on it. It has glitter on it. It's my first epoxy cup in general, and I bought the epoxy from Hobby Lobby. Okay. Um, so you've got the glitter on, correct? So now you're going to do what's called a flood coat. And if you go um, and just watch last week's uh, video also, um, you can see how I apply epoxy to, uh, to a cup, the first coat to a cup. And um, yeah, just go to that and you can definitely see how to do that. And Sean would like to know, how long do you let the water slide dry before doing your next layer of epoxy? So a lot of people say a lot of different things. Um, when I first started doing water slide, I waited 24 hours. Um, then I, because you really want to make sure under there is dry. So then I got comfortable with that and I was like, well, I think I can go to 12 hours now. So I did. And honestly, um, it comes down to, if you can see that it's dry under there, I would at least wait three hours, at because um, I've heard people wait three hours for it. You can also take it like a hair dryer and dry it. Um, I haven't done that, I just like to let it air dry. I'm always afraid if I put heat to the water slide, it's going to crinkle up or something. So I just let it air dry. Um, I wait six hours. It seems to be a good, uh, good number for me. But I've heard people wait three hours. Just make sure it's really dry under there. And I explained that in the video on YouTube. Esther writes, uh, when you sand the epoxy, the glitter ends up looking dull. Yep. Another coat of epoxy fix that. Yes. So, on my cup here, um, you can see, I before I put the jewels on, or the pearls on, and coated it with uh, a drip epoxy, I sanded that black. And it is dull. But when it's all done, after I put on another coat of epoxy, it shines right up to look like this. And you can't tell that you've epoxied or um, you can't tell that you've sanded it or anything. And Jeanette says, what's a good water slide to get for cups? You know, I just get it off of Amazon and the one I get is I don't have the container for it yeah just one off of Amazon that I get um, you get like 20 sheets for $13 and I can't remember the name of it um, I'll have Mike look it up while we're doing the live and he can put it in the uh, comments so here's that cup it is uh, I've gone around and taken the pyro uh, pin to it, the hot knife, and there is no epoxy around that rim. And 
I put my finger around there and I don't feel any edges or anything like that. So this cup is done and ready to be sent out. After I wash it, of course, remember, because I use the acetone on it, you have to wash it with hot soapy water. And you know, just if, um, fill up your sink with hot soapy water and put it in there. Sarah would like to know what grade of sandpaper do you use? Do you use real fine sandpaper? All right, so um, on how to prepare a tumbler, on YouTube also there is a video on how to prepare a tumbler and it goes over that but I'll tell you real quick um, to prepare it I use 60 grit when I've added the epoxy and I'm sanding epoxy it's 200 grit so it's real fine all right so now I'm just gonna take my weeding tool and um, pick out the epoxy inside the cup and it comes out real easily all right I wanted to make sure that you guys saw how I did this and were real comfortable with uh, doing doing it yourself you will have thin pieces not all of them are going to be thick like that so you just keep working under it with your uh, tool here and it will come off and you can usually just take it and peel it off after you've got a good and that's pretty thin And you can just kind of feel with your fingers where that epoxy is in your cup. Amber would like to know, so you sand the cup before you put on your epoxy and your glitter? Yes, yes. And the reason why I do that is because you want to uh, rough it up real good before you spray paint it. Okay? And that just helps that spray paint adhere to that cup. All right, so um, I think we've gone through all the cups. And now I'm gonna show you, say you've totally demolished your cup. Like you have so many mistakes on it, there is no fixing it. I'm gonna show you it's a real easy process and you're going to need foil and just got it at the dollar store, paper towel, and industrial acetone. And I just got this uh, can at Home Depot. It was around, I think, $8 for this can. And it's just a one quart. And then you will need a Ziploc bag, okay? Um, Jeanette would like to know, aren't you worried about scratching the inside of the cup? No, no. Um, I haven't, I've used this pick on all my cups, and I've never seen any scratch marks. Because you're just getting under that epoxy. You know, you're smoothing it over. And you're just getting over, under it. I'm trying to find, here's one. And you're just like picking it. It's almost like weeding that vinyl. How you kind of have to just get under that vinyl. Well, you're just getting under that epoxy and lifting out. You're not like dragging it on the cup. You're just getting it to where you're lifting that epoxy, getting under it and you know, flipping it out. All right, so um, if you guys have any questions, more questions about uh, polishing up your cups, go ahead and ask them while I'm doing this. So I'm just taking my foil. That's what I hate about foil boxes, yeah. 
uh, Ashley would like to know, when you use glitter on the cup, what type of adhesive do you prefer? Many people swear by using Lacre compared to Mod Podge. Um, honestly, I my favorite method is uh, epoxy. A couple weeks ago, I did a video on how to um, put glitter on, and I gave you three different ways to do it. Epoxy, adhesive, spray adhesive, and Mod Podge. So I showed you all three methods, and you can actually see that video on YouTube at Mindy's Craft Shack. Um, I prefer the epoxy method, and then adhesive, and I use the Loctite, and um, Mod Podge is my absolute last method that I turn to. So I've got a nice uh, length of foil, and then I'm going to get about the same length of paper toweling, okay? And you want to make sure that your cup fits on it just like so, okay? And you're just going to wrap the cup just in the paper toweling for now. Okay, and I'm going to tuck the paper towel into the inside of that cup, and then you absolutely want to wear gloves when dealing with this acetone. It will burn your fingers, trust me. Sometimes, if I'm really handling it a lot, I will go ahead and double glove. And so I'm going to open up this can. It's always so hard to open up. Tabitha just subscribed to your YouTube channel. Awesome. Thank you. I have, you make 99. I have one more to make 100. My goal is to get to 1,000 so I can do uh, YouTube lives with my phone. Um because for some reason you can't do it live on your phone until you have a thousand subscribers. So that's my goal. Everybody go subscribe to my YouTube page, please. Ashley subscribed. Awesome, thank you. And uh, Jeanette would like to know, does the acetone melt the gloves? Yes, it does. It can. Um, the first time I handled it, I was wearing gloves. And then, um, and I'll show you what it does just to one pair of gloves. Um, but yeah, it will make, uh, it will break down your glove and um, burn it. So here we go. I'm just going to pour the acetone over. And if chemicals really bother you, if you have any lung problems, anything like that, please wear a mask. I'm going to throw a mask to my husband because he has asthma. So uh, make sure you're in a good ventilated area. Felicity subscribed. Awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. There are a lot of helpful videos on there. And I'm going to try to start a vlog on there too. So um, you guys can see some of the process that I go through. Um trying to sell my glitter, um, selling my cups, all that. So then, um, after you've put the acetone on, you're just going to wrap that cup in your foil, making it nice and tight. Donut and Kathy both subscribe. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. So now I've got it nice and tight, okay? And then you're gonna take your Ziploc bag, and these are just the two gallon bags because I use them for if I have a 40 ouncer that I need to strip. And the 40 ouncer fits in there, so that's what I get. And I just got those at Walmart. 
And then you're gonna let the air out of the bag and zip lock it and you're gonna let it set for 24 hours for it to get the full effect off, okay? It will take off all your glitter, all your paint, but uh, do it within 24 hours. Now, this morning I did get some cups. Uh, um, in the process of stripping, so I don't know if they are like totally ready because that was about 12, 13 hours ago. But I can bring one over to try and show you how easily it comes off. And I'm actually going to put down a rag here to catch any of the acetone that's going to leak out um, because it will... Like I said, I don't know how ready this is. You will notice that um, you can already see the color on the paper toweling there. Uh, Jeanette says, you make this look so easy. I tried to do it a different way, but I like your way better. Yeah, I was uh, watching on some people how they do it somebody uses like a hot knife to cut the epoxy and I'm sorry to me that's just too dangerous because they slipped a lot of times now if I was to go and slip with a hot knife trying to cut that epoxy off and peel it off I'm gonna end up injured so I try to do this as safely as possible, and this is a safe way for me, okay? So this cup is definitely ready, I've and it just peels off. Look at that. It just peeled off, all right? Now you can still see a lot of, uh, you know, the leftovers on there, and I'm just getting that out of the way. And I just take my paper towel and start scrubbing. And when you've let it sit for at least 24 hours, it scrubs off a lot easier. Okay, so you really want to let it set for 24 hours. Like I said, this only set for 12, so if I would have uh, let it set for another 12, it definitely, all this would be coming off very easily. And it would just be, you know, me scrubbing it like so. And it uh, coming off really easy. But you can see how well and I think this was one of my uh, rose gold cups that were that I pre-bought as rose gold. It's got that dusting colored on there. But I can still um, go through and what I would do now is sand it and uh, repaint it, spray paint it, and it's, you know, after I've washed it, of course, I would still go through, oops, I left a pad in there. One of my, <laughs> my bad, it's full of acetone now. So we'll just throw that away, because it's gonna really cut down on the fibers on there and just make it really brittle because of that acetone. But anyways, um, yeah, I would just sand this and take it and uh, spray paint it after I've washed it with hot soapy water and then uh, reuse it. You know, make sure all that stuff is off there and it doesn't do anything to your cup you know, they still come out perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, um, this is a cup I know that I used and um, stripped 
and then I redid it. So, um, you know, you can't even tell that it's a cup that's been stripped before. I'm going to take a quick drink. All right. So that's that. Any questions on that? Now, there is a more in-depth video on my YouTube page, and it's how to strip a cup. All righty. So um, we're pretty much towards the end. Um, I am going to do the number game um, where you pick a number between 1 and 100. Mike, do you want to write that number down? Yes. Uh, give me one second. Okay, and when I say go, you'll be able to pick a number between 1 and 100, and you want to be the closest without going over. You only get one guess, okay? Um, so hold on just a quick minute before um, we do that. Mike's going to choose a number. He'll write it down and give it to me. Okay, and let's see. Got any questions out there? Oh, I want to show you, see how wrinkly that glove got? That's from the acetone. It gets real, so um, if you feel better and safer, go ahead and double glove, okay? Uh, Ashley would like to know, when you make your cups, you put your logo on the bottom. You know, I know some people do, but I do not. And that's a personal preference. I don't want to buy a cup and have somebody's logo on the bottom of it. I know that some people do it so they know where they got it from. But really, if to me, if they're happy with that cup, they're going to know where they got it from. So, no, I don't. I send them a card. I send them a thank you card, and I send them a care card, and all three of those cards have my brand on it. Jeanette writes, do you know how many cups I've exactoed and tried to peel the epoxy up and just gave up? Then I tried sprays, and they took off one layer or two uh -huh. that I never finished. She says, I've got at least 50 cups that need fully stripped. Well, uh, you might want to go buy the gallon jug of that uh, uh, acetone. <laughs> they, it, um, it's called Clean Strip Acetone. Get it at uh, Home Depot. Um, I don't know how much the gallon jug is, but yeah, I would get a gallon jug and just start going to town. I had a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, six cups I had to strip. So, I feel ya. Yeah. All right. I, I'll need that. Okay, well, I'll just write it here. Okay. Don't, that way. Sure I know. See it. I won't let them see it. Like I haven't done this before. <laughs> All right. So, a couple things. We've got the number. Before we do this. I do want to uh, show you um, a new glitter, and it is called Dark Siren. You can get that at MCS Glitter Company on Etsy. It's called Dark Siren, and this is what it looks like. I already showed you the cup once, but this is what it looks like on a tumbler. And like I said, that would make a perfect uh, mermaid peekaboo tumbler. It's called Dark Siren. You get two ounces for $10. It is a chunky mix. So it's got fine glitters in there and chunky. And next week, our live will be on how to apply chunky glitter to your cup. Um, I, in the past I've had some people ask about that because they've had difficulty doing it and, um, no fret, I've had the same. Sometimes I don't even like working with chunky glitter because it is a hassle, but we're doing a live on it next Thursday. 
All right. Um, another color I have is my Halloween Chunky. And this is what we're going to be using next week. It's got some purple in there and um, orange and some fine glitter. It is a chunky mix also. Again, you get two ounces um, for $10. Now, um, another thing, um, you will get a shaker bottle because I do package them in bags, nice Mylar Ziploc bags. Um, but I am having a special where you can get a free shaker bottle with each color and um, that you order. So, and it'll be labeled with the colors that you uh, buy. Felicity would like to know, do you have any army color mixed glitter? I don't yet. That would be awesome though. Um, I don't. All right. So, um, let's go ahead and let's choose. It looks like you guys are already starting to choose a number between one and a hundred. Go. <laughs> you guys are ahead of me. Uh, and Terry would like to know, do you have a sample you can show of the mixed Halloween one that is on your glitter site? Yes, it is on, um, there's a picture of it on there. Uh, and uh, there's quite a few pictures on there of it. And the dish that it is in is an epoxy dish. So you can kind of see how it looks under epoxy. All right, we have a winner. We are going to, is everybody done guessing? Well, we had somebody hit it right on the head. Oh, you're welcome, Terry. All right, so. Uh, Today's big winner. Hold on. Oh. Go ahead. You just hold your horses, mister. He is in a hurry today. Football. <laughs> um, all right. So I guess we had somebody hit it right on the right on the button. So today's number is 77. So who chose 77? I think I should, uh, you know, wait just a moment, you know. Uh, we're not in a hurry or anything here. But congratulations, Felicity Hill. Felicity Hill, you got uh, the pyro pen. So I'm going to order that through Amazon. I need you to send me your, uh, your address, and it will be arriving from Amazon. And I do believe it's on Prime, so you'll get it within a couple days. I'll be ordering that tomorrow. All right. Anybody have any more questions before we go today? Oh, and Kathy says, thanks for my glitter last week. I oh. got the package today. Good, good. I'm so glad you got that, Kathy. That's awesome. All right, so I want to put a shout out there for you, those of you that haven't done so yet. I know a lot of you already have. Thank you so much for going to subscribe to my YouTube, and I would like others to go and subscribe to that. It is Mindy's Craft Shack on YouTube. Also, we have started a Mindy's uh, Craft Shack group um, where you can put up any kind of craft that you're working on. I've got 37 uh, subscribers. It is a, a private group. So if you'd like to join that and start displaying what you make and get helpful hints from others and stuff like that, go to Mindy's Craft Shack group on Facebook. Um, also, um, go check out that glitter site, MCS Glitter Company. Order yourself some glitter. Um, there's some nice colors out there. And uh, if you're not into crafting but like to watch or order, you want to order a cup, go to Mindy's Craft Shack US on Etsy and you can see some cups designs or I custom do them. So uh, let's get you to where I can say goodbye and you can see me say goodbye. Um, I want everybody to have a wonderful weekend and have fun doing your cups and other crafts that you may be doing. I love you all. Thank you for all your support. Have a great weekend. Bye. Love ya.